Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another Kingdom Hearts video. Today for you guys, we have something pretty wild to talk about. So, at the start of this year, you guys might have remembered that I ended up uploading a video talking about how a streamer that goes by the name of Irenaeus Gaming ended up achieving level 100 on Kingdom Hearts 1 primarily on Destiny Islands. That means literally grinding from level 1 to 100 at the very beginning of the game, which is an absolute grind and was an amazing feat of strength. I clocked in the total time at 210 hours for Kingdom Hearts 1, which equates to that of almost 9 days. So total, it took RNAS Gaming around about nearly 9 days to completely achieve level 100 on Kingdom Hearts 1, and this man decided to pretty much jump straight into Kingdom Hearts 2 after achieving the Kingdom Hearts 1 grind, and do the exact same for Kingdom Hearts to grinding to level 99 as Roxas in the prologue to the game. And on the 15th of July, finally, Araneus achieved this after many months of grinding, coming in at a total of 400, yes, 494 hours a total. To Shin, Tyler, BTG. Oh no! I did it wrong! I did it. Also, a trophy doesn't pop. But level 100! I didn't go to the Sandlot, but the trophy doesn't pop anyway, so... Now the really cool thing about Irenaeus Gaming is he would definitely not be the first to achieve either level 100 on Destiny Islands in Kingdom Hearts 1, as well as level 99 in Kingdom Hearts 2 as Roxas during the prologue. He definitely wouldn't be the very first in the world. But the difference here with Irenaeus Gaming is I would have to say that this guy is most likely one of the very first in terms of absolutely streaming all of the grind from level 1 to 99 or 100, depending on whether it's KH1 or KH2. He would certainly be one of the first for doing that. I've been looking around Twitch and yes, here and there there are different grinds that people have been doing and yes, over on YouTube there are clips of people achieving level 100 on Destiny Islands or level 99 as Roxas. But like I said, these are clips and individual stream parts so you never really see the person doing this in its entirety. So I think that's what's so impressive about RNAS Gaming. Especially spending a total of almost 500 hours uh, specifically on Kingdom Hearts 2. I gotta say, that is downright impressive. I don't know how this man did it, but he did it. So like I was saying, Irenaeus Gaming achieved level 99 as Roxas finally after a few months. Like I said, it came in at a total of 494 hours, which equates to that of almost 21 days total game time. Now keep in mind, he was doing this in sessions, of course. He was also using the very final part of the Roxas prologue section in order to grind. This is the section where Twilight Town actually gets filled with different nobody spawns before you make your way to the mansion, which ideally would be the best way to grind to 99 if you're planning on doing doing so as Roxas, mainly because this is where you'll find the most spawns throughout the prologue. But this man walked around Twilight Town taking down bad guys for almost 500 hours. I don't know how this dude has the sheer willpower, so I actually had to find out for myself. So I went ahead and actually asked RNAS Gaming a few questions about the grinds and the grinding streams, and here is his responses. So this is the first question that I asked. I asked, how do you stay sane throughout these grinds? I understand that you do them in sessions, but as we've seen, to achieve max level at the very beginning takes hundreds of hours for Kingdom Hearts 2 and a couple hundred for Kingdom Hearts 1. Your sessions can vary in time, but sometimes you'd be streaming sittings of up to 6 to 8 hours long. How exactly do you cope with the repetitiveness? Iron Ice Gaming said, My friends are my power. I honestly couldn't get through these without the great people who have stopped by at any point throughout the grind. I've made more friends in the past few months doing these than I have in the rest of my adult life. We really have become a pretty tight-knit group, and the family keeps getting bigger. This was certainly the question that I was most interested to get answered, mainly because this guy is literally sitting here, not obviously all in one session, but over the course of a few months doing the exact same thing time and time and time again. And like I was saying, some of his streaming sittings went for about six to eight hours, even longer than that, some of them, which is just crazy when you think about him literally doing the same grinding tactic over and over and over again. So his response was basically saying the audience that were there watching him really, really helped him to, of course, focus 
and continue to do the grinds, mainly just keeping him sane, which I think if you are doing something like this, uh, definitely having, you know, people watching what you're doing certainly helps out, but more so, it's just nice to know that you've got people to talk to while you're just sitting there doing the same thing time and time and time again. I've done a few little grindy things like here and there on my streams in the past before, and I certainly know from previous experience, having people in there in the stream is just always a nice thing, regardless of if you are doing grinding or just streams in general, it's always nice knowing there's someone there to talk to. He goes on to say it really is a matter of finding a groove, learning the spawn slash attack pattern of each enemy as they spawn in, and getting comfortable enough to zone out of the game and into chat. There were several points throughout that I felt really hopeless. I had just finished the Kingdom Hearts 1 grind and got into another heated race to finish the Kingdom Hearts 2 grind between another streamer named P5 Boker, super cool dude who is around level 70 in Twilight Town. I was kind of an ass to him, which isn't who I want to be, and ended up taking a three week break from streaming entirely because I felt like I was just going to keep being that way. I almost didn't pick it back up, I almost quit again, at about the 160 hour mark, and again at the 350 mark. In a grind as long as this one, no matter how close I got, I still felt like it was never going to end. I think 494 hours is 21 days. 21 days of doing the same thing over and over in the span of 5 months is maddening. It's just mustering the will to go on, and when you don't feel like going anymore, it really is painful. Also, the longest session I did during the 2.5 grind was 30. Hours. Yeah, I gotta say that you would definitely need some kind of perseverance in order to do this grind. Like Aranaeus explained here, this took him a total of 5 months in order to complete from start to finish, and I can only imagine just how maddening it would be to do something time and time and time and time and time and time again, especially when you're doing it for multiple hours uh, each session. And like he said here, there was even one session where I actually spent 30 hours total uh, simply doing the same thing again and again and again, which is obviously longer than a day, so again, just kudos to RNS Gaming, the man's an absolute legend. The second question I asked was, what made you want to stream these grinds? RNS Gaming said, my wife and brother encouraged me to start streaming after my wife started watching YouTube videos of Markiplier. Both of them thought it was something that I'd be good at, but in the sea of faces on Twitch, I really wanted to do something to make me stand out, and that is why I did the Destiny Islands grind. It was something that, at the time, I could only find one person to have claimed to have done it, and there was very little proof. I wanted to be the first person to provide definitive proof, and wanted to do it live. After that, the Twilight Town grind just seemed like the natural next step. So yeah, like I was saying earlier on in the video, there's really not many people out there, if any people at all, that have the entirety of the grind on the internet, whereas I would say RNS is likely to be the very first person to have both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 100% streamed from start to finish, achieving max level at the very beginning of the game. And keep in mind, RNAS Gaming is new to that of Twitch, like he explained in this response, and he said that one of the ways of standing out in amongst so many people on the platform itself was to do the Destiny Islands grind. And it certainly attracted a lot of attention, especially from the Kingdom Hearts community. I know as soon as I saw this uh, achieved, you know, level 100 on Destiny Islands, I absolutely lost my mind, so... A very nice start indeed. And the final question I asked was, do you plan on doing the same for other Kingdom Hearts titles, e.g. Dream Drop Distance, Birth by Sleep, or even Kingdom Hearts 3 when it's out? This would also be interesting for other games that have a similar premise to the way Kingdom Hearts is structured. RNA said, as far as Kingdom Hearts grinds, I believe my next one is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3. I'll be doing the grind on whatever the starting world turns out to be. If I do another Kingdom Hearts game before or after that one, it'll probably be Rechain of Memories. I really love the combat and leveling system in Rechain, and I think it'd be fun to run an early game grind on it if I do another Kingdom Hearts grind. I have started a couple of other grinds though, I'm currently working on a Pokemon Fire Red grind, getting Bulbasaur to level 100 on Route 1, currently level 20 Ivysaur. Also working on a Final Fantasy XV grind, getting max level before progressing past Chapter 1. Final Fantasy XV grind isn't looking good though, so I might not continue that one. The Kingdom Hearts 3 one especially is the one that I'm looking forward to. I'm sure that similar to the way that Kingdom Hearts 1 was set up and Kingdom Hearts 2 was set up, uh, the sort of prologue beginning of the game will be sort of similar for that of Kingdom Hearts 3. So I definitely feel as if a sort of grinding type setup is going to be possible in KH3, and it's definitely one I'm very, very interested to see. Uh, we don't 
know the max level for that game, it's most likely going to be 99, as that has been the uh, the max level for all of the Kingdom Hearts titles so far, uh, aside from that of, of course, Kingdom Hearts 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave Irenaeus' links in the description down below. This includes his Twitch link as well as his Twitter link. Uh, be sure to go over to one of his platforms, say hi, how you doing, show him some love for the crazy feat of strength he recently achieved. But I absolutely had to do a cover video on this, mainly because I did cover his Kingdom Hearts 1 grind, so I absolutely had to do the same with his Kingdom Hearts to grind. I just gotta say, Iron Ace Gaming, congratulations to you once again, man. That's the second grind you have completed. Super, super impressive stuff. Cannot wait to see what the future holds for you, dude. But with all that being said, I'm Cynical. Hopefully you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day. In the comment section down below, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.